Hey guys, it's Libby and today I am doing a review of the Newberry and Hobbes Investigation Series by George Mann. The books in this series are the, oops, I'm starting at the wrong end, are The Affinity Bridge, The Osiris Ritual, The Immortality Engine, and The Executioner's Heart. There is a fifth book that's going to be published next year, I think, called The Revenant Express. And there's also a collection of short stories that has been published. I haven't read that, um, but a couple of them are available for free online. Um, and I have read those two or three. So George Mann is uh, perhaps more well known for writing novelizations of Doctor Who stories. Um, and that definitely makes sense. These books have a bit of a Doctor Who feel. We have our sort of foundation in science fiction with sometimes some fantasy maybe uh, and then the sort of thing that carries us through each book is a mystery or a puzzle that we have to solve and then there are little sprinklings of romance. I know some of you hate the romance in Doctor Who. I'm sorry it is less bad in this. So our main characters are Sir Morris Newbery, who uh, his day job is as a, an antiquities expert in a museum, uh, but he spends a fair bit of time solving crimes with his geniusness, and then his assistant in his, um, officially his assistant in his museum job, but she often ends up getting wrapped up in the uh, crimes sector is uh, Miss Veronica Hobbs, and they are very English, so I am saying their names with British accents, I apologize to all of the English people who watch this show who are cringing right now. Other important people are Sir Charles Bainbridge, who is a uh, high up um, in Scotland Yard. Of course, because you can't be a rogue private investigator if you don't have some assistance from the uh, establishment police force, Queen Victoria is also quite important, and so is Veronica's sister, Amelia, who um, has fainting fits and visions of the future. This is set in, I think, like 1899 to 1903, so Queen Victoria is supposed to be dead, but this is an alternate steampunk London. So Queen Victoria is being kept alive by this giant machine that fills her with like embalming fluid and pumps her lungs and that sort of thing. Also there are flying dirigibles and automatons and zombies because of course there are. So steampunk is normally more in the science fiction category than the fantasy category but it can sort of sometimes borrow fantasy elements um, and I think this is like my own pet theory, I don't think George Mann is intending this, but um, I actually think that none of the fantasy elements are real. The zombies have a biological explanation and then the only other two um, sort of fantasy elements are Amelia's uh, prophetic visions and Sir Morris is like into ancient occult magic. But I actually think that it doesn't work. Like he performs, you know, arcane rituals, but um, I think it's all just a placebo effect. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out in the later books. But if I am right, then I called it documented right now. So it's a little bit hard for me to go into each of the books one by one because they are mysteries, so I really don't want to give that much away for the plots of them and also um, our perceptions of the main characters sort of change as the uh, series progresses and so I'm afraid that I will let something slip about my opinions of the characters. So I'm going to try to do a little review of each of the stories, but I'm afraid it's not going to be particularly in-depth. So The Affinity Bridge is our first book. The various pieces that need to be fitted together are uh, the rash of zombie attacks in the slums of London. There is an um, airship that has crashed with a rather important person on board and everyone is now dead. And there are some freaky automatons being freaky, as they do. When I first read this book, I was a little bit concerned from a feminist point of view. Um, this is called the Newberry and Hobbes Investigation Series. So um, I kind of assumed 
I think justifiably, that um, Veronica, Hobbs, and Morris Newberry were going to be equally main characters, but in this one they really weren't. So Morris was the main character and Veronica was a side character, pretty much. All of the action scenes Sir Morris had on his own and Veronica uh, was either not in them or sitting passively by. Uh, there was a little glimmer of hope though because at one point when she was sitting passively by she was like, oh man, that was pathetic. I probably should have been helping. But that issue does get remedied in later books. Veronica uh, becomes more important, there's more text dedicated to her, and she gets to kick the occasional butt. Of course, the action scenes are some of my favorite. Actually, not of course. I'm not an action-y type of person, but I have a really good time with these um, because the action scenes in the New Brain Hobbs series pretty much involve our main characters getting the crap beat out of them. Like, so hard. It's not even funny, she said with a big grin on her face. And if these get made into movies or TV shows, somebody please put me in the costume and makeup department because I would just love to go through these books and figure out like, okay, so Sir Morris like gets punched here, so we've gotta have the bruise makeup, and then he gets like dragged along the street in a motorcycle, so you know, his shirt sleeves gotta be all cut up. Uh, I would have so much fun with that. Then we have the Osiris Ritual, which is the one that I actually liked least, not in the least, because uh, the publishers decided to make it different from the rest of the books. I don't know why. Let me show you. So, um, it's a little tiny bit taller than, uh, than the rest of the books, and it also has a glossy cover instead of a matte cover, because uh, apparently this publisher... Tor uh, just doesn't like it when we have matching book series. Come on, Tor. Anyway, this is about uh, an ancient Egyptian mummy that is brought back to England and revealed, and chaos ensues. Also, some young women are disappearing from, like, magical stage shows. How does this all blend together? You must read the book to find out. But the actual plot-based problem, as opposed to a design-based problem that I had with this book, is um, there's a couple times where I think there was just too much, like, awkward um, telling instead of showing, and, you know, sometimes there's telling instead of showing, but sometimes it's done in a stupid way. Like, um, the, the readers need to be informed of the myth of Osiris. I actually didn't because I'm a genius and I already knew the myth of Osiris, but I believe that some people don't. So Sir Morris, who is like apparently an antiquities expert and knows a whole bunch about ancient Egypt, has to ask someone to explain the myth of Osiris to him. And I'm like, that's something he would know. Could we have figured out another way to get the Osiris myth explained to us, please? Have Sir Morris explain it to somebody. Have it like as just third person stuff glommed in there, whatever. Just not, just not the way it worked out. I didn't like that so much. And then we have the immortality engine where we really start to get into stuff that it can't talk about. The characters have changed enough that I'd be spoiling the first two books if I told you about what goes down in the Immortality Engine or the Executioner's Heart, really. I'm sorry. But I will say that the Executioner's Heart was my favorite of the lot. Um, normally, I'm very serious about my bedtime. I go to sleep about 10.30 every night because I get really tired. But this book kept me up till more like one because I just had to know what happened. I went through the last half in one sitting. It was really intense and really clever. So yeah, I gave all of these books a four out of five stars except for the Osiris Ritual, which I gave a three out of five stars. Um, I think, like, if the Affinity Bridge had just sort of been on its own, I would have given it more of a 3 or 3.5, but since it grows into the rest of the series, um, that makes me forgive some of its faults. So I would recommend this if you are trying to get into steampunk. This is a fairly accessible entry point. Um, if you like Doctor Who, I would definitely recommend this. Um, and, of course, if you are okay with grossness because we get, I believe, four different descriptions of people's 
um, intestines being removed from their bodies and various different things are done with them. So if you really don't like the gross, then stay away from these. But if you can handle some gross, if you can handle intestines everywhere, if you can handle some vomit inducing scenes, uh, then go for it. It's not great literature. I will not pretend that it is great literature, but it is very fun. So if you have read these books, please let me know. Let's talk about them. Let's talk about all the things that I was not able to talk about. You know what, like that thing with Amelia, that thing with Amelia. Let's talk about it. And I will see the rest of you soon in a new video.